Hi, I'm Martin Zabłocki, MLOps architect at Getting Data. Today, in the next couple of minutes, I will show you how you can run your machine learning pipelines on Snowflake using Kedro. Let's go! Recently, we released Kedro Snowflake plugin, which allows you to run Kedro pipelines directly in a Snowflake. The plugin is fully open source, you can check out its code on GitHub. If you are looking for some way to run Kedro pipelines on different platform, you can check out our GitHub and also our Getting Data YouTube channel for more video tutorials showing how you can run Kedro pipelines, for example, on Azure ML, SageMaker, and so on. In this video, I will walk you through our quick start guide that you can find in the documentation of our plugin. You will be able to refer to it in the future without rewatching the video. Before you start, you obviously need a Snowflake account. However, to follow this tutorial, the Snowflake trial account should be fine. You can sign up for the 30-day trial using official Snowflake website. Once you create your account, make sure that you have username, password, account name, database name, warehouse name and schema name at hand. They will be needed for the plugin to work. Since our plugin is built on top of Snowpark and Snowpark requires Python 3.8, this is the hard requirement. So far, Snowpark only supports Python 3.8, so we need to, to use this version. You can always refer to official Snowflake documentation to follow up with the latest updates and see what is the currently recommended way to set up your Python environment for development. Right now, the recommended way is to use Anaconda and also to override the channels. So in the documentation, you see that they are creating new Conda environment with the channel override to Kedro Snowflake. This will be relevant in the next step. I will go back to that. So let's open terminal and let's use Conda to create new environment for Snowflake. Okay, environment was created. Let's activate it. And let's follow with the next step in our quick start guide. The next step is to actually install our Kedro Snowflake plugin. The plugin itself will bring the dependencies for both Snowflake and Snowpark, as well as Kedro itself. Okay, the plugin is installed. As with all of our plugins, we did our best to make the onboarding process as simple as possible for our users. So this time we also prepared Kedro starter for you. Let's type in Kedro starter list. And you will soon see Besides the official Kedro starters that are provided by Kedro, we'll also see our starter provided by Kedro Snowflake plugin. And indeed, in here, you can see it's a Snowflake starter. It's a starter based on official Kedro Spaceflight tutorial, but with all of the adjustments related to simple use of our plugin and running the pipeline in Snowflake. So let's create a new project by typing Kedro new and providing the starter Snowflakes. What's important in here, you also need to provide a specific tag for the starter. Our current version of the plugin at the point of recording this video is 0.1.2, so I'll type just that. The starter itself will ask you for a few things, and after that the project should work just fine. Let's start with the project name, Kedio Snow Tutorial. Next, it asks for a Snowflake account. It is the part that you will see in the URL that you log in into your Snowflake account, but you can always find it later on. I will show you how to do this. So let me open our Snowflake account. And here on the bottom section, you will see your, your number of your accounts. And if you copy the account identifier, you will see a string that you'll need to input to our plugin. But with one adjustment, you need to replace the dot by a dash. So let me copy this value here, paste it down, okay. Next, it asks me for a Snowflake user. My Snowflake user is this one. Snowflake warehouse, I'm using the default one. It asks for a database that will be used by default. It suggests the database should be named Kedro. I'll use just that. And the schema, public, it's fine. The last prompt is about Snowflake password environment variable. This part is really important because this is how you will allow the plugin to authorize to your Snowflake account. We strongly encourage you to not store it directly in Kedro credentials or anywhere else. Just provide it in environment variable and both our plugin and Kedro 
itself will be able to use this password and communicate with your Snowflake account. So by default, it's Snowflake password. And, and in my terminal shell, I already have this environment variable set to my Snowflake password. Okay, started, created a new project. Let's open it. Okay, new project created by our starter looks like every Kedro project. It has configuration directories, data directories, uh, logs, notebook, and source code. And let me guide you through the things that are specific to our plugin. Let's start with the configuration. In the configuration catalog in Kedro, in the base one, you will see a new file called Snowflake YAML. And this is the file where we store all of our configurations related to our plugin. Let's run it one by one. Our plugin provides two options for connecting to Snowflake account. The first one is based on Kedro credentials and it's fully compatible with built-in Kedro Snowpark table dataset that is maintained by Kedro team officially. And by using the credentials approach, you will see in your local configuration folder in the credentials that indeed I have my Snowflake key here with all of the things that I've provided during the starter creation, which are account user, warehouse database schema and password. And in here, again, you see that I am not providing the password in plain text directly. I am referring to the environment variable, which uses uh, Omega config loader from Kedro. By default, it will, be, it will be null, but if it's provided, it will be injected in password. That's how you can securely authorized to your Snowflake account. And the second option, which is commented out here, you can provide all of the things that you already have in credentials, which are account, database name, and so on, directly in this file. You have just two options. Choose the one that is more convenient for you. The next section in the configuration is the runtime configuration. Since our plugin translates Kedro pipelines into Snowflake tasks, you will see all of the things related to creation of those tasks, such as schedule, stored procedure name, prefix. By default, it's empty and configuration of two stages. The first stage is the one that will store procedures, which are Kedro nodes. And the second one is for temporary data. Uh, our plugin automatically creates those stages uh, if they are not present yet in your account. The next section in the configuration is dependencies. This section is really important because it instructs Snowflake which Python packages will be available for your stored procedures, which are Kedro nodes. The default configuration provides with sufficient uh, list of dependencies that will allow you to run starter. And there are two sections in the dependencies. The packages section lists all of the packages for your project that are available directly in official Snowflake Anaconda channel. Let me open just that. This is the listing of official packages supported by Snowflake in Snowpark. And this list is ever growing, uh, but not all of the packages are available. That's why we have this other section in configuration. So in the import section, you will see all of the packages that are not available in the Snowflake Anaconda channel, but the ones that will be uploaded from your virtual environment into Snowflake account and they will be extracted at runtime. Keep in mind that the packages that you can upload from your local environment into Snowflake are only the ones that are purely Python. If you need to use library that contains some binaries, unfortunately there is no way to do this yet. So the last section is pipeline names. You can provide human readable names for your Kedro pipelines. So Kedro double under default package will be translated to default in Snowflake. Our starter provides a simple pipeline that showcases all of the options available to you when you are using Kedro with Snowflake. Let me open our pipelines and let's start with the data processing pipeline. So here, the first section that you see is that we have data processing pipeline with export data to Snowflake. It takes the company's data set and outputs companies in Snowflake. This is a step that showcases how you can move data from one place, which in this case will be local data, into Snowflake table. So if we go into the step definition, we'll see that I am just using the data frame that was loaded by Kedro from data catalog, and I'm returning Snowpark data frame created from the CSV file and how it will be loaded into Snowflake. So let's open catalog to check that out. In the catalog, you will see that the input dataset was companies loaded from my local file, but I'm 
uploading it to Snowflake using the Snowpark table dataset. This is the official dataset provided uh, by Cadro team. And I'm defining table name, which will be company Snowflake Starter. And also I'm referring to the same credentials that our plugin uses. So here, credentials, Snowflake. What else do we provide in our default pipeline? The next step is preprocess companies. So here in the preprocess companies node, I'm defining my custom function for parsing percentages. And I can do two things. Since I'm operating on Snowpark data frame, I can use all of the things that are available to me, like simple mapping of, of the Boolean values, as well as invocation of custom, uh, custom user defined functions. All of the processing will be uploaded to Snowflake cluster. Next node is preprocess shuttles. This is the same preprocess shuttles that you will see in the official Kedro spaceflight starter. This is a pure Python function without any dependencies on Snowflake whatsoever. You don't have to define the UDFs. If you process something in memory, it will work just fine. Last node is creating model input table. This is a node where I combine both Pandas data frames with uh, Snow Snowflake data frames and I can merge them together using the same Python API that you would expect to work anywhere else. The second pipeline in our starter project is data science pipeline. This is the same pipeline that you will see in Spaceflight Starter without any changes. This means that, for example, train model node will use scikit-learn to train machine learning model on top of your data. Last feature that uh, our starter provides that is worth mentioning is that in the data catalog, there are not only the official Kedro Snowpark table datasets, we provide one additional thing, which is the Snowflake stage dataset and how it works. The Snowflake stage file dataset is a wrapper on top of any file-based dataset. So if you are working with Kedro, for example, with CSV datasets, you will be able to use them just fine, but you can also store them directly in Snowflake stage by using our dataset as a wrapper to it. So in my preprocess shuttles, I'm providing the type of the dataset to be Snowflake stage file dataset. Next, I'm providing the stage and file path that determines where my file will be stored. I'm also providing the same credentials that I did before. And this is the, the new thing here. I'm providing the definition of the underlying dataset. So here I'm using Pandas CSV dataset and our dataset will automatically do the heavy lifting for you. So if you return data frame from your node, our plugin will first save the data frame that you have provided in the CSV format as set in the dataset type. And then this file will be uploaded automatically to Snowflake stage. I will show you how it looks just in a minute. You can use any official Kedro file-based dataset here. So for example, like in here, CSV dataset, but also Parquet datasets and Pickle datasets and anything that is file-based. So now you know how the starter project looks like, what are the important components and how they are configured together. While you are developing the pipeline, you probably want to iterate fast on, on the pipeline itself locally, and you can do just that. So let's run our pipeline locally first. Obviously, before running the pipeline, you, we need to install the requirements. Okay, once the dependencies are installed, let's just type in our same old Kedro run and the whole project will run first locally. Obviously, the parts that are related to uploading the data to Snowflake and storing the files in Snowflake stages will need to communicate with your Snowflake account, but the whole orchestration of the pipeline will be done locally so you can iterate fast. Okay, our local pipeline finished correctly. You can see the outputs uh, in the logs. So now let's move this pipeline to Snowflake. Now with one simple command, I will be able to run the same pipeline on Snowflake. Let me just type Kedro Snowflake run with uh, additional flag that will block my terminal from exiting. And now what will happen is that our plugin will translate the Kedro pipeline, upload it to Snowflake account with all of the dependencies that are required to run it, and it will create Snowflake's task graph for it, and after that, it will execute it. 
If you are using the wait for completion flag, the terminal will block and will show you the history of the executing tasks. Okay, Snowflake tasks execution started and soon the table that you can see on the screen right now will update with the next stages of Kedro pipeline running in Snowflake. You can see that it already started. Every nodes that are possible to run in parallel will run in parallel and every sequential node will run in the particular order defined by Kedro pipeline itself. Okay, the pipeline has finished. So let me show you what happened in our Snowflake account. Let me open my Snowflake account here in my Kedro database in the task section, you can see that all of my nodes were actually created by our plugin. And if you open one of them, we'll be able to see whole pipeline graph from Kedro. So all of the step dependencies, all of the nodes are visible here. So we have our pipeline that starts with the start task. We have our export data, pre-processing companies, pre-process shuttles, which will be run in parallel. Then we are joining those tables together to create input table. We're splitting the data, training the node and evaluating the node. From this task graph, you can also view the run history. So if I open run history, I will see the executions of my particular task, which here create model input table. I can trace it down. I can see what was the history of execution. I'm also able to view the query profile and debug, for example, some performance issues or trace some logs if something breaks. For example, you will be able to see them, see everything in the, in the query details. Moreover, in the tables section, you can see that our company's Snowflake starter table was created, which was created by one of the tasks. So you can see the data preview here. And the last thing is the part related to stages. So remember in the data catalog here, I've defined that pre-process shuttles needs to be stored in my temporary stage under path data intermediate pre-process shuttles. So here in the stages, in my temporary data stage, I can indeed see data, intermediate pre-process shuttles. This is a CSV file saved by my Snowflake pipeline. Last but not least, all of the intermediate data that flows between steps is saved by our plugin automatically. Again, in the catalog, as you can see in here, my catalog contains only definition for a few data set entries. So companies, company Snowflake reviews shuttles, pre-process shuttles. But in my pipeline, I have, for example, model input table. And this model input table is saved by our plugin automatically to Snowflake stage. So in here, in our Kedro Snowflake temporary stage, I have my stage here determined by the unique identifier. And in this unique identifier, I can see all of the uh, intermediate data stored as cloud pickles in a compressed form. So we can always refer to that uh, and debug your pipeline if something breaks. But if the data set that you are processing is uh, using Snowpark data frame in Kedro. So in our case, that would be the pre-process company's node. I am taking the Snowpark data frame and returning Snowpark data frame, which is just transformed. This intermediate data, again, does not have to be defined in the catalog, but our plugin will automatically save it as a transient table in Snowflake. So in Snowflake UI, I can see my Kedro uh, table saved here, which is indeed something that uh, we prepared in the pre-process companies. Remember, we've mapped here, we've mapped our IATA approved to Boolean and parsed company ratings percentages to floating point values. So indeed, we see in here, IATA approved is a Boolean value and the company rating is the floating point. Thanks for your time. Now you know how to run your Kedro pipelines on Snowflake and leverage all of the compute power provided to you by Snowpark. If you encounter any issues, feel free to reach out to us either on GitHub issues page on or Kedro Slack. We are really active there. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to Getting Data YouTube channel for more videos like this one in the future. Bye.